Hello and welcome back to Lokana Villain. My name is Baker and today we're going to be taking a look at a 2k event hosted by Charlie's Collectible Shows. This event had 103 players. The event took place on the 17th of March. We actually reported not too long ago on another event that took place also at Charlie's Collectible Shows on the, uh, on the same day, which was an 8k and had 226 players, but there was also a 2k which had 103 players. The deck lists only became available yesterday. My information today comes not only from inkdex.com, but also courtesy of Kendall, who was not only one of the players, but the winner of the whole thing. It was them that helped to compile these deck lists, so a huge shout out to them. But yeah, this was a big event. It's been about 10 days now, but I still think this is data definitely worth taking a look at. A pretty diverse set of top eight lists. Three Ruby Amethysts. What are you going to do? I think that's pretty good going compared to seasons one and two. So yeah, we're going to take a look at the lists, but... Something a little bit different today. I mentioned in one of my previous videos that I'm moving in a couple of weeks. And as such, lots of packing going on, lots of preparation. And I discovered in my garage something that I didn't think I had anymore. Disney trivia. I don't, like, I, this, I don't... I, maybe you've got it at home. Maybe you've got this. But I found this and I was like, oh, that's cool. And I took a little look and there's loads of quiz cards. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a little Disney quiz for you. Obviously, if you're not interested in this sort of thing, then timestamps as usual. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask five questions um, and then I will give the answers right at the end of the video. When we get to, when I finish the top eight, I'll read the questions one more time just as a refresher and then I'll give you the answers. But yeah, let's do a Disney quiz. So all these cards come with five different questions, um, all from different Disney films. I will pick ones that are Disney films specific to Lorcana. So, question number one. In the animated feature, 101 Dalmatians, where do the Dalmatians find shelter from a terrible blizzard? Question number two. You know what? Let's do it like a game show. I can do game show. Question number two. Who gets adopted by loving parents at the end of the animated feature, The Rescuers? In the Sword in the Stone, at the end of the wizard's duel, what does Merlin turn into to defeat Madame Mim? Question number four. According to the mob song in Beauty and the Beast, how many Frenchmen storm the Beast's castle with Gaston? And question number five. Who pardons Robin Hood at the end of the Disney animated feature, Robin Hood? All right, there you go. There's your questions. We'll read them again quickly at the end and then give you your answers. But let's take a look at the top eight deck lists. But not before I remind you that this channel is sponsored by Card Market. So check out Card Market for all your trading card game needs. So in first place, we have some good old fashioned Ruby Amethyst control, courtesy of Kendall, who once again, shout out to them for being the, the, the one to compile all these decks and definitely worth highlighting. Kendall is a name that is, it's, it is it is known to me. I am familiar with said name. Um, pretty good uh, resume so far in tournament results. Second place in the CM Games in Knoxville 2K, which I remember reporting on. Top 16 in a Pixelborn online constructed tournament. Top 4 at another CM Games 2K um, last year. So yeah, certainly a player building a really nice resume for themselves. Um, You'd have to see it. So let's take a look at their, at their list. Like I said, Ruby Amethyst Control. We are opting to play four copies of Olaf. A lot of Ruby Amethyst players moving away from the 1-3s and deciding to go with just the Rafiki. Uh, well, the Rafikis and quite typically Chernobog's followers. Um, but I still do like having 1-3s, especially if you are going to play Teeth and Ambitions, which I'm coming round to more. Um, I've never been a big lover of Teeth and Ambitions. If you know my channel, you know I've like, I respect it. I I appreciate why it, some, it makes its way into decks. But I've never been that high on it. But the way the meta's shaping, I feel like I kind of want to move back to these. Especially if in the mirror, you're going to be rewarded more from a lot of players playing the Rafikis and the Chernobogs. Um, but I still like I still don't think playing the, the Rafikis and the Chernobogs is a bad call by any means. But I do like having at least one, one three stat line. So we've got the four Olaf and of course still four Rafiki. Still a fantastic card being able to hit that three. Two, two Kuzgo is really nice. Another character to get down before turn three and means we can extend and not be as punished if he's removed because he replaces himself. We've got the four snake, the four fox, four goat, four rabbit. We are seeing three crab, which I understand. Like I, I played three crab in my um, Dark Sphere winner case event. I was really high on crab um, and 
and from my run that day, I found that it was too many, and I, but I was only running two Maleficent, and I was wishing that it was the third Maleficent. Kendall's already playing the three counter Maleficent, but again, that could, like, I still like the three crab, it just didn't perform for me hugely well on this particular day, but you can't take... I can't, I, you can't take that as complete summary. Um, it may have just been a bad experience. But yeah, I do like the crabs at high accounts. Just make these lower cost characters more formidable. Get you to location numbers. Lovely, lovely, lovely. For Maui, for some board control, went to work with the Maui's fish hook. We've got one copy of Yzma, who I really like in this format. Bounce away a threat or return your own characters for some draw. We're seeing three copies of Madame Medusa for those um, tragic hero beasts. Lots of targets for this. Opting not to play the Lady Tremaines. Two copies of Maleficent, as I um, alluded too early. Three copies of Teeth and Ambitions for aggro and Punish the Mirror if they're only playing Shola Box and Rafiki's. Four copies of Friends. Four Be Prepared. We're playing the One Sorceress Spellbook. The Two Maui's Fish Hook in here to make ourselves evasive and make ourselves stronger. And we are playing two copies of Queen's Castle, which is the number I went with in my top eight run and I found that to be a really nice count. So yeah, a pretty typical Ruby Amethyst list, opting uh, for a split of these one-drop characters. So we've still got one threes the, with, with the Teeth and Ambitions. The One Spellbook alone the one Yzma. I do like Tremaine's in current RA builds, but Kendall not seeing the need. But yeah, that looks really good. A huge congratulations to them. Coming into top four, our next Ruby Amethyst list, we've got Luca, who is playing that 4-4 of Rafiki and Shonabog's followers. Hey, if you can get away with it, then great, because um, Shonabog's followers just adding another an, another option, being able to fin your deck, draw cards, Opt opting for three copies of the Wanted Llama. We're seeing the two copies of the Talkative Puppet Pinocchio in here. It wasn't in Kendall's list. Yes, it was in Kendall's list. I just didn't mention it. My bad. But yeah, a, a very common um, tech in Ruby Amethyst. It's really strong in our current meta, so I'm a big fan of it. We're seeing the three Maleficent also the three crab. So a pretty similar lineup to Kendall, just other than the Shonabog's followers being instead of the Olaf and the High Count of Kuzco. We've got the four goat, the four rabbit, the four Maui, just one Yzma. We're seeing three Medusa, but accompanied by two copies of Lady Tremaine, our Imperious Queen, who I'm, I'm liking coming back into Ruby Amethyst builds. Um, just I think it just helps against the Sapphire decks, um, Sapphire Steel especially. Um, Maleficent at a two, four friends, four be prepared, We're playing the two Sorcerer Spell book, which I think is important in the mirror to be able to make sure that you get yours at as well as your opponent or quicker than them. Three Maui's Fish Hook and three copies of the Queen's Castle. So you get some more pretty cookie cutter, good old fashioned RA. So congratulations to Luca. And lastly, for our Ruby Amethyst list in top eight, we've got Vincent, a very similar looking list again, this time opting for four copies of the Olaf, same as Kendall. So a split of these ones, also the three wanted llama. We're seeing the Pinocchio, the traditional bounce things. No crabs in this list though, but four Maleficent I really like. One Yzma once again, the two, three split of the Tremaine and Medusa, which I think is the most common split that we're seeing in most of the lists that I'm looking at anyway. Three copies of Maleficent. Excuse me. Two copies of Teeth and Ambitions, four friends, four be prepared, the one spell book, and three copies of Maui's Fish Hook. Um, I've, I've been tempted before, don't get me wrong, to go to the three Fish Hook because um, it, it can be really important. Um, I think I'm fine with two, but Vincent making room for a third and led them to top eight, big old field, so I respect it. Huge congratulations to them. Going back to second place, we have Keith with some Amber Ruby Mufasa, and this list is identical to our 8th place list by Troy. So uh, this is too similar for me to not assume these guys are friends, teammates, all of the above. But yeah, I'm a big fan of Amber Ruby Mufasa taking advantage of our 5 cost inkable Mufasa Betrayed Leader. 3-3, three, three, quest for 2, and when he's banished, flip the top card of your deck. If it's not a, if, sorry, if it is a character card, then you play it exerted for free. This version opting to play no non-character cards. You quite commonly see um, either ores of lanterns, be prepared, sometimes even bare necessities, teeth and ambitions as well to help the early game, which considering we're seeing the mini, um, I, I I would have thought Teeth and Ambitions would be a really nice addition here, but no, all characters. We're seeing three copies of Pluto, who's not coming up in many um, Amber, um, Amber decks in general, really. Pl maybe the most... I don't want to say overrated, because I still think Pluto is good, but if you compare from the hype to how much of it is actually been played or being played at the moment, um, I think overrated is the wrong word, but overhyped? probably closer. Um, but yeah, Pluto seemed really well positioned by a lot of the community, including myself, and just hasn't been performing amazingly. A, a couple of tops, but not 
the instant include in even Amber Ruby Mufasa and um, I think Steel Amber songs at one point people thought that it would it might play them. Uh, but yeah, making making an impact here. The friendly pooch zero two quest for one one cost uninkable and good dog exert to pay one less for the next character you play. We've also got Doc here, who's the three cost inkable two three quest for two and has the same ability. So. Doc has been good since Season 2 with Mufasa just to allow for a turn 4-5 drop, um, which typically you want to be Mufasa. Sometimes you want it to be Maui, especially if you're on the draw and you just need to respond to a board state. Um, we've also got Kidas in here, who's an option for that, who we'll come look at in more detail in a moment. Um, but yeah, if you're able to go turn 1 Pluto, then there is a world where you can go turn 2 Mother Gothel, Turn three, Rapunzel. Obviously, that's assuming that they don't remove your Pluto or your Gothel with any sort of chip damage cards. You won't be exerting, um, not by choice anyway. Uh, Pinocchio could be a way that offsets this as well if they get a one, like a Rafiki turn one and then turn two, um, Pinocchio. So it can be offset, but if you can get that curve, it just feels really nice. Alternatively, turn one, Pluto, turn two, Pluto, um, turn three, five drop. So again, this lives and dies by Pluto living or dying. Uh, but just having these lines is is really cool. We've got four copies of Minnie Mouse, always classy, um, which may seem strange. I think, um, well, I'm basing this off of uh, what I've been told or have been brought to my attention that more than anything, this is just... Uh, an answer to Cursed Merfolk, which is just a bit of a kind of broken card. Broken's the wrong word, but Cursed Merfolk is really good. Um, and this deck has a quite slow early game anyway. It's, obviously, it's not just Cursed Merfolk, just aggro in general. But that's one of the prime targets. Um, but yeah, an answer to the early game, which can be Mufasa decks, um, Achilles heel. We've got four copies of Simba to protect our Pluto. Um, and again, nice plays that we can get off of this if we hit the Simba off of a Mufasa flip. And we had something else on board that our opponent really wanted to take out. So you'd have to see it. Gothel and Rapunzel, I've mentioned for their card drawing abilities. Doc for the cheaper plays. We're also running four copies of Piglets. Very small animal. Three cost inkable, two, four quest for two. So an aggressive quester and a nice way to easily set up our Rapunzel with that four willpower meaning hopefully we can challenge into something take the the full three damage that is the max that rapunzel can heal and draw and just take advantage of it four copies of stylish surfer mini which i think is absolutely fair enough and mufasa two copies of hades which again i'm also a big fan of you go through characters a lot nice to be able to recycle these mufasas we don't have the best card sometimes it can feel like you draw really well if you're able to get a rapunzel turn by on turns like three four or five and then if you're able to get a stitch play on turn um, four, five, or six, then it can feel like you're just you you had do have a lot of cards. But if you miss these, then you can struggle. So Hades is going to give us a bit more card advantage, and of course they can recycle themselves. But yeah, also four copies of Kida, five cost Inkable, Floodborne. The shift is irrelevant because we're not playing a baby. Three, five, quest for two, and perhaps we can save the future. When you play this character, all characters get minus three strength into the start of your next turn. That's all characters that were on board when Kida was played. So yeah, really, we're an aggro deck. Like We've got answers to be challenging, like Maui, like Hydra, and obviously our, our bigger bodies. But really, we're an aggro deck, so if we can get some characters down on board um and then on a, on a and our opponent is building a board as well and then we throw down Kida and then we get a really safe questing turn where they probably can't do anything to upset our board um then yeah that i can absolutely see the use for this in being pretty game changing uh, the four mufasa and maui's i've said also three copies of hydra six cost inkable six five quest for two and watch the teeth whenever this character is dealt damage deal that much damage to chosen opposing character so obviously it's going to get most of its value against steel decks um which can annoy them that like sometimes they won't want to play their chip damage cards because it upsets their own board they, there are ways to play around it but it does help against steel and even against non-steel like you can challenge into one thing um and then whatever damage that thing did to you you put that damage on something else on their board assuming your six takes out the thing you're challenging um so yeah hydra i hear mixed opinions about some people absolutely love it and swear and die by it but i've also seen people do well with mufasa with hydra and said it was kind of meh um but i am a fan of hydra four copies of lady tremaine which i think is totally fair enough in this deck i do kind of like a, a, a medusa um but to be fair like if you can ramp not ramp if you can get a maleficent down on six or seven courtesy of like doc or Pl docs and plutos probably seven at the earliest really um then that can be your way of dealing with specific things 
And again, Lady Tremaine sometimes can just get her value. Sometimes if they just can't extend uh, the four stitch for the draw. And of course, the four Maleficent. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Mufasa. Um, slightly different build to what I've been playing and will be featuring on the channel very soon. I've been mentioning this for ages. I'm sorry, I've, I've, I've gotten really busy. Um, but those games have been recorded and I just need to actually do the commentary for them um, and review the deck. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But I'm a big fan of Mufasa, so it's great to see it come to set both second and eighth place. So huge congratulations to both Keith for second place and Troy for eighth. Next up in top four, a little bit of spice, we have Max with some Ruby Sapphire Dime Control. Taking advantage of the Lucky Dime, seven cost uninkable, um, item and number one, exert, pay two, choose a character of yours and gain law equal to their law. So this means if you've already got the dime down and then on the following turn, you can play one of your big questing characters and provided you've got another two ink left, you can immediately get the law gain from them, which can just win games. And then if they can't deal with that character in their turn, you're then questing with that character and then getting the lore again with another lucky dime. And we're playing three copies. Should, should have good odds of being able to get multiple of these down. And of course, we're ramping with one jump ahead and fishbone quill. Um, Porps are cool for the item drawing to work well with Flavisham. And of course, he can work well with our items in general. Preferably, we're not getting rid of our lucky dime um, or our fishbone quill, really. But sometimes you do need to. Um, Maui's fish hook here to give us extra strength and make us evasive. Works really well with the Maui's. But even if Flavisham is banishing our more important items for the card draw, we have four copies of Tamar Toa here to hopefully recycle them. Also, four copies of Maleficent to be a nice big body. Obviously, we're ramped, so it makes sense. Four be prepared as the big red button. And then going back to the beginning, we've got four copies of Felicia, always hungry. My baby! One cost Ingable, three, one, and a Reckless. Um, so yeah, I think this is this is perfectly fine. Like, hitting for three on a one cost character, like, is really good. Didn't see a lot of play in Rise of the Floodborne, but Rise of the Floodborne you expected a lot more to see at the store these cards that would just do the chip damage. Now, I know Rafiki also falls to this and can be just as easily removed. And he's basically very similar, hitting for the three. But the difference is you can request with Rafiki. And because, because Felicia has Reckless... She can be baited into unfavorable trades. Um, again, you're a one cost, so you're probably never like mad mad about it. But sometimes you need Felicia that three to be hitting something more important. And it's too easy for them to just quest with something unimportant and then just make you challenge because of Reckless. And obviously because of your one willpower, you're probably taking yourself out. But again, we're not playing um, Amethyst, so we don't have that Rafiki option. And this deck really struggles in the early game. It needs to get through the past few turns. So having Felicia and a four count of Queen of Hearts with Rush 2-2 two, two, is going to be some nice early board presence. So I'm a big fan. Three Grandma Tyler Storyteller for some additional ramp. Also four copies of the Keeper of Ancient Stories. Look at the top two cards of your deck. One into your hand, one to the bottom of your deck. So card draw is what this deck is lacking. It's hopefully helping us find a key piece. And 3-3 three, three is a perfectly respectable stat line. For Maui for the um for the for the board control and obviously works well with the fishbone quill. For Gaston, which is also similar to Tyler for card draw, a bit of a deep a deeper dig, um, but quest higher, more a straight a better stat line at 4-4, four, four, and one of the first characters like that we can really start to get some lucky dime gains from lucky dime gains from. There you go. And then we're also seeing four copies of Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor. Eight cost Ingable, five, five. Five, quest for four evasive love it with a dime why not absolutely why not yeah like not many people have, have i'm sure people have thought of it and probably just decided that they'd rather the slots go to, to other things so this is the first time i'm seeing a top cut where the dime deck is using the blts and i'm a big big fan of it so yeah slightly different version to a lot of the dime lists i've looked at recently um i mean really it's the felicia and the mickey that are the main differences but the list looks really clean led them to top four so huge congratulations to max Going into top eight now, we have Homero, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, with some EA Tempo. Just win the game. You're welcome. What can I say except you're welcome for the islands I pour from the sea? Hey, well, oh, I've got the words, bruh. Ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. Ah, oh, I'm annoyed at myself because I used to sing that in cabarets. Kid, honestly, I could go on and on. I can explain every natural phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, there was Maui just messing around. I killed an eel. I buried its guts. Sprouted a tree. Now you got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't worry, Maui, and he's on a breakaway. And the tapestry here on my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where, look where I've been. I make everything happen. Look at that. Look at that me, mini Maui. To tippity tap, to tippity tap, to tippity tap, to bring the chorus back. Oh, what can I say? Sorry, that went. 
you know me by now. You 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 know the deal. Uh, but yeah, going into top eight, we've got some EA tempo just win the game. So take advantage of Ursula, Deceiver of All. Fallen off a bit the last couple of weeks. We've not been seeing a whole lot of Emerald. Um, I I wouldn't take that too seriously. Um, what do I mean by seriously? I wouldn't ride on. I still think it's a good deck. I just feel like it's had some bad runs lately. I mean, like, people really are really switched on to it. Um, and there's a lot of answers for the Ursula. And to be honest, like, if you miss your Ursula tempo, then it probably can feel bad. I still haven't really gotten around to testing this. Um, I really need to. I'm still a big fan of the deck and just the, the, the both the Ursas are still just so incredibly strong. So, yeah, underperforming as of, as of late, but I still think this is a really good deck. I would not write it off. So, yeah, obviously the Deceiver of All can play a song. We can play it again for free and then put that song to the bottom of the deck. So draw four with friends on the other side or return two characters to the player's hand with Mother Knows Best. We've got a nice early package here for Rafiki for some board control, the four cursed merfolk for some aggressive questing and making our opponent discard some cards. Also, Flynn Rider, very similar in that vein. We've got the four snake, the four fox, three crab to make these characters stronger. Four go, only two rabbit, um, which fair enough. If you can get your friend's tempo, then that's probably fine. Uh, three copies of Pinocchio, which I'm, I'm not against at all. I think this can be really game changing if you get Pinocchio turned down at the right at the right point in the game. Kick Cloud Kicker to return a character with two strength or less to their player's hand. Really good in the mirror and just how many characters have we gone through already that have this two strength or less? A lot is the answer. Two copies of Tinkerbell to be an evasive, aggressive quester. Two copies of Genie, also an evasive, aggressive quester, but also with a disappear ability so we can bounce characters back to our opponent's hand one copy of the sorcerer's spell book to hopefully keep law tempo and four copies of the queen's castle so yeah nice to see an ursula list doing well i say like has fallen off the last couple of weeks this tournament was 10 days ago um but haven't uh, she hasn't come up a lot in the list i've looked at recently but still i'm a big fan of the deck and led to a top eight from this person so huge congratulations to them and last but not least, we have Marcus with some Amethyst Steel Jafar. More often than not, at least one Jafar slips into these top cut lists. So take advantage of the Striking Illusionist. Chip for five on a seven cost inkable character. Four, five stat line. Quest for one, evasive and power beyond measure. During your turn, when this character is exerted, whenever you draw, gain a law. So we can gain law from Yzma. Blue Fairy, the Dreadnought, friends on the other side, um, probably missed something, uh, El uh, the Rabbits, but most prominently the Whole New World, which is an instant draw seven. And you don't even have to be all in on Jafar because Amethyst Steel mid-range decks are just good because Tinkerbell be, uh, be great board control. Robin Hood is really strong for the lore bump and he replaces himself and he's got a pretty cool stat line. We've got the Tragic Hero Beast for additional draw, plus can be a bigger beat stick. Jafar Dreadnought makes his way into Steel Amethyst lists, even the ones that aren't playing the Striking Illusionist, just because he's a nice stat line and, again, the ability to draw. So we don't have to be all the, all in on Jafar, but it's a really nice kind of just insta-win option. Uh, but we are a little bit more dedicated to, to to our boy Jafar in this deck, playing two copies of the Royal Vizier, the two cost inkable 3-2, and Quest for one with Evasive, so also an Evasive answer. We're also running two copies of the Keeper, of secrets. I always like to see this. This is probably my favourite art from chapter one. Four cost inkable, zero five, quest for two. This character gets plus one strength for every card in your hand. So there is good odds that we can have a big old hand and this can be like a five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight strength beat stick. Uh, and questing for two is really good, but again, they're just more, uh, additional shift targets for our striking illusionist. Like, then our opponent is not always going to have answers to all of them if we really want to get this Jafar off. So, really like this. We're running two copies of Captain Hook to be some more early um, board presence, and also three copies of Mr. Smee with a great stat line and questing for two. The four Robin Hood to go with the Floodborn. Also, Blue Fairy, who's going to help us draw more cards. All of these Floodborn characters the Jafar, the Jafar, the Beast, the Robin. Robin Hood, the Yzma, the Tink, all getting us an additional draw if we've got the Blue Fairy on the board. Also running two copies of the Tiny Tactician Tinkerbell, just because turn four shift Tink is really, really strong. The three rabbits, as I mentioned. The one fire the cannons, which I, I really like. Sometimes you see this plus one baboom um, because it's a really strong card, but keeping it before Mulligan and then drawing into a second 
kind of feels bad. Um, but yeah, I like the one more fire the cannons. Three Rise of the Titans because this deck can really struggle with locations. And again, items are just as prominent. Um, spell books, quills, those sort of things. One copy of Smash to be a nice answer to things like Ursa Deceiver of All and all these things. Like Arthur's, Docs, things that can really get our opponent going and we can just shut them down. Three Friends, one Along Came Zeus, four Holy World and three Grab Your Sword. So yeah, really like this Jafar list. Glad to see it is continuing to make a presence in top eight lists. So yeah, huge congratulations to Marcus. And that is it for the top eight deck lists for the Charlie Collectibles Show 2K event. So again, a nice diverse set of lists. A huge shout out to Kendall uh, for compiling the list and of, and of course, as always, to inkdex.com. So let's go through these questions again. But before I do, really, really quickly, quick sponsorship thing. It's currently the 27th of uh, March. On the 1st of April, I will be doing the draw for anybody who has signed up to Whatnot using my link and made a purchase. If you sign up using my link, you get £10 off your first purchase um so yeah there are seven people so far who have signed up and made a purchase um so just a reminder if you are one of those people make sure you go back to the actual video where the sponsorship was related the box opening video it will be linked down below make sure you have left a comment saying your whatnot username so that i can verify and make sure you are in the draw for the trove um and if this is the first of you're hearing it and you'd like to be um in with a chance of winning a Lorcana Trove. All you've got to do is sign up to what not using my um, specific um, link to sign up. Um, and then you will get £10 off your first purchase. Um, just enter the code Lorcana Villain. It's all, it'll all be in the description. Um, and if you make a purchase, again, you get £10 off your first purchase. The purchase can be any amount. Um, you will then, after commenting on the video, letting me know that you did that, be entered into a draw for a Lorcana Trove. Only a couple of days left to go. So just last plug for that. Okay, I'm done. Sponsorship plugs done. Let's, let's, let's finish the game show. So I'll go through the questions one more time. So question one was, in the animated feature 101 Dalmatians, where do the Dalmatians find shelter from a terrible blizzard? Question number two was, who gets adopted by loving parents at the end of the animated feature The Rescuers? Question three was, in the sword in the stone, at the end of the wizard's duel, what does Merlin turn into to defeat Madam Mim? Question four was, according to the mob song, in Beauty and the Beast, how many Frenchmen storm the Beast's castle with Gaston? And question number five, who pardons Robin Hood at the end of the Disney animated feature, Robin Hood? So pause the video now if you need time to think about it. You've got five, four, three, two, one. Zero. So question one, um, uh, where did the Dalmatians find uh, shelter from a terrible blizzard? The answer was a barn. The question, who gets adopted by loving parents at the animated feet at the end of the animated feature, The Rescuers, it is Penny, the little girl. Question three, in The Sword of the Stone, what does uh, Merlin turn into to defeat Madame Mim? The answer is a germ. Question four, how many Frenchmen storm the Beast's castle with Gaston? It was 50. And 50 Frenchmen can't be wrong! And question five, who pardons Robin Hood at the end of Robin Hood? And the answer is King Richard the Lion. How many did you get out of five? Let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're a fan of Disney trivia, let me know. I, if, if enough people say they enjoyed that, then I will do it more often. But if not, I will probably throw this away and it will never be seen again. But that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to the channel, please subscribe for all things Lorcana. Hit the like button to show support and we'll see you soon.